Mr. Durham, in the summer of 2016, did our government receive intelligence that suggested Secretary Clinton had approved a plan to tie President Trump to Russia? Yes. Was that intelligence important enough for Director Brennan to go brief the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, the Attorney General of the United States, and the Director of the FBI? Yes. And was that intelligence put then into a memorandum, a referral memorandum? Yes. And was that memorandum then given to Director Comey and Agent Strzok? That's who it was addressed to, yes. Did Director Comey share that memorandum with the FISA court? I'm, I'm sorry, can you? Did he share that memorandum with the FISA court? Did Director Comey do that? I'm not aware of that if he did. Did he share it with the, with the lawyers preparing the FISA application? Not to my knowledge. Did he share it with the agents on the case working the Crossfire Hurricane case? No. Didn't share it with the agents on the case. Can you tell the committee what happened when you took that referral memo and shared it with one of those agents, specifically Supervisory Special Agent Number One? We interviewed the uh, first supervisor of the um, Crossfire uh, investigation, um, the operational person. Uh, we showed him the intelligence um, information. Uh, he indicated he had never seen it before. Uh, he immediately became uh, emotional, uh, got up and left the room with his lawyer, um, spent some time in the hallway, came back. Um, he was ticked off, wasn't he? Yes. He was ticked off because this is something he should have had as an agent on the case. It's important information that the director of the FBI kept from the people doing the investigation. The information was kept from him. Who's Charles Dolan? Charles Dolan uh, is a public uh, relations person here in uh, Washington, D.C. He had uh, prior involvement, professional involvement with the uh, Russian government, representing Russian government interests. Uh, he was a person that was associated with Igor uh, Danchenko. Um, he was also buddies with the Clintons, wasn't he? Uh, he had um, held positions um, when uh, President Clinton was president. And their campaign advisory to Secretary Clinton's presidential campaign, executive director of the Democrat Governors Association, that's the same Charles Dolan we're talking about? Uh, yes. Yeah. And wasn't he also a key source for information in the dossier? He provided some information that was included in Ritz the dossier, Ritz-Carlton yes. stuff, the Manafort stuff. In the Crossfire Hurricane investigation and the Mueller investigation, when the FBI interviewed Mr. Dolan, what did he have to say? Um, to my knowledge, they didn't interview Mr. Dolan. They didn't interview this guy? Source for the dossier, key information in the dossier, buddies with the Clintons, they didn't talk to him? No. I mean, we report on that because um, even Christopher Steele in October 2016 identified Dolan as somebody that might have information. The I find it interesting they didn't talk to him. What, there were, were there agents on the case who wanted to talk to Mr. Dolan, Mr. Durham? Yes. What happened to analyst number one? She kept pushing to talk to Mr. Dolan. She was ultimately turned down. What happened to her the day that she was turned down and said, no, no, you're, we're not talking to Dolan? What happened to her? Um, at about the same time, she was assigned to a different project. They moved the her. They said, we can't have this. We can't have that. We can't be looking into the Clinton's buddy, a key source for the dossier. They reassigned her. And then what did she do? She memorialized it. She entered a memo to the file because she said, at some point, the inspector general is going to want to know this information. I'm going to make it sure it's recorded contemporaneously. She put it in the file. That's, I mean, it's crazy. They didn't talk to the, the, to the key source. They kept key intelligence from the, the investigators. This is how bad this investigation was. But here's the scary part. I don't think anything has changed. The day your report came out, five weeks ago, May 15th, you got a letter, Mr. Durham, addressed to you from the general counsel at the FBI, Mr. Jason Jones, writes you this six-page letter, and he says, not to worry, everything is fine. It's all been worked out at the FBI. He even says on page two, he says, had the reforms implemented by current FBI leadership, summarized below, been in place in 2016, failures detailed in your report never would have happened. And he underlines it. He said this would never happen because of the reforms we implemented in 2019 and 2020. And then he says on page four, one of the specific reforms, he says, FBI executive management has instructed investigations should be run out of the field and not from the headquarters. That statement is not true. Five weeks ago, the FBI wrote you and said everything has changed when in fact it hasn't, and a statement in there is absolutely false, and we know it's false because two weeks ago today, we interviewed Stephen D'Antuano, former head of the Washington field office, Mr. Durham, and here's what he said in his transcript. 
head of the Washington field office, when the Trump classified document investigation began, he said, that case was handled differently than I would have expected it to be than any other cases handled. We learned a lot of stuff from Crossfire Hurricane that headquarters should not work the investigation. It's supposed to be the field offices. My concern is that the Department of Justice was not following these principles. Nothing is, and that's the thing that scares me the most. Nothing has changed. Mr. Durham, I'm just finished with this. 60% of Americans now believe there's a double standard at the Justice Department. You know why they believe that? Because there is. That has got to change. And I don't think more training, more rules is going to do it. I think we have to fundamentally change the FISA process, and we have to use the appropriations process to limit how American tax dollars are spent at the Department of Justice. I yield back. Gentle lady from Texas is recognized, Ms. Jackson Lee. Good morning. Good morning. You uh, value the independence of a special counsel, do you not? I do. In a letter to Attorney General Garland submitting your report, you asked him to allow you to continue investigating. Okay. Actively directing your work. General lady yield yields, the general lady yields back. I think this is amazing, Mr. Durham. You had eight text messages with the Attorney General of the United States in 11 months time period. That's, that's, that's amazing. I, I can't believe that. Mr. Chairman, parliamentary inquiry. The, whose, whose time is that that you were speaking of? That was that time that was yielded to me earlier that I yielded back, I think. That's a select Mr. Uh, Chairman, that is, that is absolutely that. inappropriate. I was just pointing out something that I think is so Mr. So Chairman, ridiculous. that is not appropriate. And we will go to Mr. Klein for five minutes. The gentleman from, George, or from Virginia excuse me, is recognized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Durham, your, your report is not just sobering, as you stated. It's, it's outrageous and deeply troubling. Can you confirm these several main points that it, that it 